your, your, your slides will be right. This is X hat. We have state observer. This state observer, to estimate the state, the, uh, the, the former slide, the previous slide, we don't have state as, as matter. So this state as the matter is X hat. Uh, again, I just rewrite here, because uh, the, uh, the slide is not correct. A X hat K plus B K, and then uh, plus G Y hat K minus Y K. All right, and then Y hat K equal to uh, C X hat K plus D U K. All right, so. Here, our computer will estimate the x hat. We are given the x hat. So the computer, the computer, will estimate, estimate the state x, state uh, vector x. Okay. All right. Now, look at this. My feedback force, my feedback force will be u equal to f is a constant times x hat x. It's not y. It's not alpha. The feedback will be x hat x. So we got, we call it state feedback. This we call state feedback. This estimate state feedback. This so we our feedback force will be f x hat k. Computer give you the, the, the state and the, the state estimate. Give you the the computer will estimate the state vector x hat for you to feedback. For you for feedback. For feedback. All right. So, uh, so this control force is different from the control force you seen in last slide. Plus, we have we have the E K. So now, total input force will be U. Total force equal to E K plus U K, and U is F X hat K. Not U K, because here we need the U K. So this is U here. U K has to come over. So this is U total K. U total K come here. Then we estimate the next step. Okay. This is what we call state feedback. Now you understand what state feedback now? It's different from the output feedback. The output feedback, the computer don't estimate now the, uh, the state. It just compute the virtual, uh, the, uh, uh, the virtual system. But this is the estimate of state. Now, the estimate state, in theory, or is it in theory, x uh, estimate state will approach to the real state. This is a real state. That will approach the real state, or equal the real state if if everything A, B, C, D are all exact, and your G is a is a, 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 a observer like what you see it uh, in uh, in, uh, in the last example. This approach the true state or real state in theory. Understand now? Okay. Now, now in, in this, we talk about there's a, there's a two controller we are, we are going to learn. One is a power placement, one is the optimum control. Both the, uh, both the power placement and optimal control use the full state feedback. We call the state feedback. It's a state feedback. Okay. 
people control, law enforcement all use the uh, state feedback. And the ABA used the auto feedback. Stand up. All right. Uh, there's a comment here for G. Observer can many directly identify from data. If you learn system ID, uh, not G. How can we compute G? There are many ways to compute G. All right. You can use other professional technique to compute G, or you can use a, a lot of different uh, technique to compute compute G. And also, you can identify G from your data uh, if you know how to do system ID. Some system ID technique will identify A, B, C, D plus G from. So you can use those to do your uh, the, uh, state estimations. Okay, that's the state feedback. Now the definition of state feedback. All right. Now, control against the, uh, to stabilize a dynamic system is not unique. In other words, you can have a lot of different ways to do the control again to, to design control. So con con some control will save energy, con some control will, will, will drive to the system as fast as possible to your desired state. But this, those, those are the, uh, all the uh, state feedback. Now, closed loop behavior is largely determined by the location of the closed loop uh, eigenvalues. So, in your homework number, uh, number three, or number, I forgot, I said, okay, if I give you the eigenvalues, uh, and then ask you, say, what kind of the uh, gain you're supposed to have? That's the same thing like here. Uh, if I give you, I say, I want to have the closed loop eigenvalue at certain location. In other words, <coughs> I must explain about this. All right. Now, what you mean is, <coughs> we know that uh, close to eigenvalue. Uh, let's see. Uh, let, let's continue with this, and I'll explain later. Observe. Now, is that a four-state feedback controller for a control system? <coughs> Use the no space. Here we use the no space technique to determine control gain to have the eigen value of the closed loop system. Let us go to an example. Uh, this is again, this is a simple example. We always use this as a simple example because this is, gives you some idea. <coughs> now this is my open loop system. W dot plus W equal to U. And there's no bending for this system. Now, if there are control force is U equal to F1 W plus F2 W dot. Assume I have W and W dot available. Assume I have a measurement of W and W dot. Assume, I just assume, okay. If you don't, then you can request W by W hat. W dot by W dot hat means you estimate the value. Okay. Here we assume, say, I have that. Then, my cross loop system, my cross loop system will be, you put U back here. So W dot, to do, be careful about this. This is, this is, this is very simple uh, concept here. W dot dot plus W uh, equal to U. Now, uh, equal to, that F1 W plus F2 W dot, right? And that that means I have W double dot minus F1 W uh, dot F2 W dot, and then uh, plus one minus F1 W equal to zero, right? Now that's that's so. This is my cross loop. That's my cross loop system. So this is, this we call cross loop system. Because I, I, I already sub, substitute my, my control force in there. Now, if we let W equal to C, uh, we solve the, this C, E lambda T, 
then we'll get the, uh, those uh, lambda square minus F2 lambda plus 1 minus F1 parenthesis, and then C the E lambda T equals 0. All right. Now, what is lambda value we have? All right. Lambda. Assume. That's the eigenvalue. Lambda square plus F2 lambda plus 1 minus F1 equals 0. That's my eigenvalue plot. So my eigenvalue of the cross loop system will be equal to that. And that the desired plot, assume I, my desired eigenvalue. My desired cross loop eigenvalue is minus 0.5 plus 0.886i. My number 2 is 0.5 minus 0.886i. Now, you have to be careful about cross eigenvalue. Now, cross eigenvalue, they come always as a pair. That means that if lambda 1, lambda 2 will be lambda 1 complex, complex conjugate. That has to be accomplished a pair. So when you design a control, be careful that, that lambda 2 and lambda 1, they are conjugate each other. That means lambda 2, if if lambda one is complex, then lambda two must be equal to lambda one country. Alright? Because because that's because because F one and F two must be real. So again, F1 and F2 must be real. If not real, you cannot implement. If we have a complex F1 and complex F2, how can I compute my U to be a complex U? How can I get complex input? That doesn't make any sense, right? So, because I want to have real F1 and real F2, so my cross loop eigenvalue lambda one, if it's complex, then lambda two must be the complex conjugate. Because then that will guarantee you F1 and F2 are real. That's the reason. Okay. Now let us continue. If, if I know my, my lambda one, lambda two, then so lambda equal lambda one, lambda equal lambda two, so that's my eigenvalue problem. If I know the cross to eigenvalue, and that equation I'm supposed to have. 